Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on spring cleaning for nonprofits 990 filing and compliance with tax 990. My name is Tiffany and we are here with Nikita today with tax maintenance and tax 990. We are excited to help you stay informed and IRS compliant. If you have any questions during the presentation, please add them to our chat. If you are unable to see the webinar in full screen, please try clicking the square in the upper right of the webinar to enlarge the view. As a reminder, Tax Bandits is an IRS authorized e-file provider. While we love to talk about taxes and have years and years of experience, we are not tax advisors. If you need assistance with preparing returns or any other specific questions, please consult a certified tax preparer or the IRS. Now we will take a quick look at using GoToWebinar Toolbar. Hello, thanks for joining today's webinar. You can enlarge your screen for the optimal viewing experience using these buttons. You can also click the arrow here to view the hidden menu. The section at the very bottom will twirl out a menu that allows you to ask questions for the host to answer. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy this webinar. Thank you, Tiffany, for allowing me to join today and present this webinar to your Tax Bandits clients. I'm really excited to um, share some information with everybody about Tax 990. Just as Tiffany had mentioned, um, Tax 990 is an IRS authorized e-file provider. We do um, have several years of e-filing experience for the 990 series forms. But just like tax bandits, we do not give direct tax advice, but we're happy to assist you with using the tax 990 filing format and answering questions about your 990 along the way. Today, we're going to talk about IRS e-filing requirements for the nonprofit sector. We'll look at the deadlines for the nonprofits, the importance of reporting accurately, the filing process for tax professionals, We'll take a look at some key features that Tax 990 offers, and we'll review all of the different forms that Tax 990 provides. The IRS mandated e-filing for the 990 series returns on July 1st of 2019. Organizations filing a return with a tax year beginning date after July 1st, 2019 are required to e-file the returns moving forward. As we know, the IRS is moving towards e-filing for many reasons. E-filing reduces the number of filing errors and helps ensure that the IRS guidelines are met, meaning calculations are more accurate, and the information provided matches the information in the IRS database. It makes filing with the IRS and the processing more efficient and provides a quick, quicker turnaround time on updated form status. The form you file will depend on your organization's financial activity during each year. If the organization's financial situation changes, so could the form requirements. Tax 990 supports the suite of 990 series returns, so you can consistently file with the same provider regardless of financial activity. We'll review the forms individually here shortly. The 990 series returns are intended to provide the IRS and public with information about the organization's programs, activities, relationships, transactions, and governance, in addition to revenue and expenses and assets. The 990 return allows the organization to confirm with the IRS that they're adhering to the tax exempt status and the guidelines um, that the IRS indicated accordingly. For an organization to maintain their tax-exempt status and remain compliant with the IRS, organizations are required to file a 990 series return on an annual basis. If an organization fails to file a return for three consecutive years, it will risk losing its exempt status. Additionally, penalties may accrue with each year that you don't file the 990 returns. A penalty of $20 a day $105 a day for larger organizations may be imposed for the late filing. 
the penalty amount can go up to a maximum of $10,500 or 5% of the organization's annual gross receipts. That could be a significant amount of money for the smaller organizations, so it is incredibly important that they file on time on an annual basis. The 990 series return deadlines are based on the organization's tax year. An annual 990 series return must be filed by the 15th day of the fifth month following the end of the organization's tax year. If the 15th of the month falls on a weekend or federal holiday, the deadline is moved to the next business day. Most organizations have either a calendar tax year that runs from January 1st to December 31st or a fiscal tax year that runs from July 1st through June 30th. However, a fiscal tax year can be any 12-month time frame other than January 1st through December 31st. If time is limited, an organization does have the option to file an 8868 form to apply for a six-month deadline extension. As a tax preparer, you may have clients all year round that need to file the 990 series return based on the different organization tax periods. Right now, Tax 990 is focusing on the May 15th deadline for calendar tax year organizations and organizations that operate on a fiscal tax year of July 1st through June 30th and filed an extension for their November 15th deadline. An organization filing a 990-990-EZ or 990-PF is asked to report on the program service activities and accomplishments and their program service revenue. This information is, be, is going to be taken into consideration when applying for grants, approaching donors, and increasing the funding. The purpose of providing this information is to explain to others how you're operating your organization and utilizing funding to adhere to the mission. It's important to paint a picture of the activities hosted to encourage financial gain for the organization. The information organizations provide in this section also helps the IRS determine if their activities are appropriate, appropriate for their exempt status and it allows conveying to the public what, the, what was accomplished throughout the year. Ultimately, the information reported in this section can have a big impact on the organization, so it's important that it's completed properly. Providing significant, thorough, and accurate information is incredibly beneficial. Not only will the IRS review the return to confirm the accuracy and ensure you're maintaining your reason for exemption, but donors and contributors will review the information to confirm donations are being used towards exempt purposes, and grant applications will review the use of your funds and the narrative to ensure the grant will be used to the highest value. If you do not provide information accordingly, it may have a future impact on fundraising objectives or the organization's success. When you register for a new account with Tax 990, you'll be able to indicate that you would like to create a tax professional account. You'll be automatically prompted to add your preparer details, including your P10, EIN, and firm information as applicable. Our tax professional accounts provide the option to manage all the organizations you work with within the same Tax 990 account. We also understand that as a firm filing for several clients, one person is not always responsible for completing the 990 series return. With Tax 990, you can add staff to your main account to assist in the filing process. You'll be able to assign specific organizations to individual staff members and set rules that allow the staff to either only prepare the return or prepare and transmit the return. Tax professional accounts have the added benefit of purchasing credits. If you expect to file a large amount of 990 series returns during the year, you can pre-purchase the forms in bulk at a reduced per form cost. 
This will allow you to just add a credit in the form of payment during the checkout process and skip the process of entering your credit card information with each form transaction. The credits do not expire, so if you do not end up using all of the purchase credits this year, they'll remain in your account for future use. And when you add staff to your account, if they have permissions to transmit the return, they'll have access to the credits so you're not sharing credit card details. As a tax preparer, you're required to obtain a signature from your client that will be sent with the return to the IRS. This confirms that the client has given you permission to complete the return on their behalf. We've streamlined the process for obtaining your client's signature for the 8453TE form through an e-sign process. The e-sign process allows you to send a link to your client that they can click on and e-sign their form from their computer or phone and submit it back to you. Tax 990 also offers the option to file amendments and prior year returns. We offer e-filing for the current and two prior years, as well as the option to file an amended return on an originally accepted form for the current and two prior years. In addition to the tax preparer specific features, Tax 990 offers several other advanced technology features to assist you in the filing process. Tax 990 performs an internal audit after you've completed the return. This verifies that the requirements from the IRS form instructions have been met. The audit helps verify that your calculations are accurate and necessary schedules are generated. The form will auto-generate a lot of the calculations, which helps remove the guesswork from filing by calculating several areas of the return for you. For example, when you input all your different categories of revenue, the total revenue will be calculated accordingly. It's important for an organization to know if the return was accepted, so once the IRS provides a status update, you'll receive an email with an acceptance notice you can email that acceptance notice to your client if necessary. The acceptance letter will remain in the Tax 990 account to be accessed and downloaded um, for your client at any time to provide confirmation to your client that the return was successfully filed and accepted by the IRS. Additionally, in the case that the return is rejected by the IRS, Tax 990 provides the reason for the rejection and allows you to resolve and retransmit the return at no additional cost. For example, if the IRS rejected the return because the tax year provided does not match what the IRS has in their database, you'll be able to edit the information on the return and retransmit it. An organization highly depends on the acceptance of a return, so if a return is rejected, and there's no notice of the rejection, the organization can risk penalty or losing their exempt status. So providing the rejection information and the ability to retransmit a return will help the organization remain compliant. We also understand that in most cases, it is preferred to review a draft copy of a return prior to filing or while working through the process. You will have access to a draft PDF while you're working on the return. When you finalize and transmit the return, you'll have access to a professional copy for your records. The professional copy will remain in the account so it can be printed and downloaded at any time. This is beneficial for an organization that may need a record of the return later for grants and funding. You'll be able to just email them a copy from your account when necessary. Filing a 990 return can be a lengthy process. So when file, you file the return with tax 990, you can come and go as you please and the information you enter is saved automatically. And since we offer a cloud-based program, you can access your account from anywhere at any time and pick up right where you left off. The organization information saves in the Tax 990 account, so when it comes time to file for that client each year, you can select what organization you're filing for 
and the name, EIN, address, and principal officer information will auto-generate. When filing from year to year, a lot of the information does remain the same, and with Tax 990, we provide the ability to transfer information directly from a prior year. And when filing consecutive years, the organization information, public charity status, books are in the care of details, Schedule B contributor names and addresses, list of officers, and prior year revenue and expenses can all be transferred to the current year return. This is an optional feature and information can be changed once the transfer is made, which leaves it completely customizable. We also understand that it's not always easy to know what additional information is required on a return. So when you complete a return with Tax 990, we help determine what schedules are required based on the information that's provided on the form. The schedules required will automatically generate for you to complete. Additionally, only the necessary parts of the schedule will appear so you're not completing information that's not required. For example, if you make the selection on the 990 form that your organization is a 501c3, page 1 of Schedule A will generate automatically. Once you choose your reason for public charity status on page 1 of Schedule A, the necessary additional parts of the schedule will be enabled. We provide the option to share the return for review and approval from your client. So once you complete a return, you can share it with members of the organization for approval. The return can be shared electronically, meaning you send the organization member an email to access the document online and they can review it, comment on it, and approve it. Or you can share manually, meaning you would print a copy to share with the organization members physically. Now, as I mentioned, Tax 990 offers the entire suite of 990 series return. So if an organization's financial status changes from year to year, you won't have to find an alternate e-file provider that offers a larger or smaller return. We have the 990-N, which is filed if the organization's gross receipts were less than $50,000 during the tax year. The 990-EZ is filed if the organization's gross receipts were less than $200,000 and total assets were less than $500,000 at the end of the tax year. The 990 form is filed if the organization has gross receipts greater than $200,000 and total assets greater than $500,000 at the end of the tax year. The 990 PF, which is used to calculate the tax based on investment income and to report charitable distributions and activities for non-exempt charitable trust treated as private foundations. The 990T is for reporting exempt organization business income. The 8868, as I mentioned, is the application for an automatic six-month extension of time to file. The 1120POL is the U.S. income tax return for certain political orga organizations. The CA-199 is the California Exempt Organization Annual Information Return, which is the state-specific return filed to the state of California in addition to the 990. The 8038CP, which is return for credit payments to issuers of qualified bonds. And as mentioned, we offer the option to file amendments and all of the necessary schedules. So now we're going to take a quick look inside the Tax 990 application to review the process of getting started. So you're going to start by visiting tax990.com and click sign up to create a new account. As a tax preparer, when I mentioned earlier, when you sign up for a new account, you'll check this box here, the Tax 990 Pro option, which is specific to tax professionals. You'll add your email address, name, create a password, and check that box, and then you'll click Create Account. 
Once you've created your account, the first step is going to be adding your paid preparer or tax professional details. You can indicate if you are a paid preparer, an ERO, or both, and provide the necessary information. If you do not have a firm, you can indicate you do not have a firm, and the firm name and EIN will no longer be required. And you'll be able to add your P10. Now for this demo, I do already have an account ready to go with a couple of organizations in it. But as I, men oh, as I mentioned, you can manage multiple organizations from the same account. You, as a tax professional, all of your organizations will be listed here on the home page. You can search organizations by name when you get a significant amount of organizations in the account. It's easier to search um, by typing in the name or by looking them up alphabetically using our search bar here. And to add a new organization, you would just click Add Organization. In this account, I have two organizations set up and I'll just kind of go over some of the basic navigation of the account. So if I click on this organization, it's going to show everything I have currently in that organization that has been filed or is in progress or that we're working on for the current and two prior years. For anything prior to um, the, the latest year we support would be in show filing history. So if you filed for the same organization for eight years, only the current and two prior years are going to show up on the home page. Everything else will be archived into the filing history. As I mentioned, you'll be um, the account will indicate when the form is accepted or rejected. If it's rejected, you can click on that rejection, learn why the IRS rejected it, and have the opportunity to fix it and retransmit it. The PDF is available for each step in the filing process. The receipt is available once the form has been paid for. The 8453 copy is available once your client has signed it. And the acceptance letter is available once the form is accepted. Now on this organization, we'll see a few different form statuses. We have paid not transmitted, which means the form is completed but has not yet been transmitted to the IRS. We have transmitted to the IRS, which means all of your steps are complete and you've sent it off. Now we're just waiting for the IRS to provide a status update. And we have in progress, which means it's a form that we are currently working on. If we click continue filing, it'll revert back to the form-based filing format that we are working on and we can pick up where we left off with that form. Now, as I mentioned, the schedules automatically generate for you to complete. So as you can see here, all of our schedules currently do not have anything generated. They're all kind of grayed out. But as soon as I indicate that I'm a 501c3 organization on my form, Schedule A populates. So that's telling us we're required to complete Schedule A. If we click on, oh, I'm sorry. If we click on Schedule A, only page one has generated at this time until we indicate what type of public charity we are working under. As soon as I click which type of public charity, the necessary additional pages are gonna generate, such as page three, part three. Now, as I mentioned, we have the internal audit. So once you feel like you've completed the whole form, all of the pages, all of the schedule information, you can click proceed to audit and transmit. You're first going to see a general overview of the information on the return, and then you'll be taken to the audit report. Now, if you have any missing information, or as I mentioned, you haven't successfully met the IRS e-file guidelines, you'll get an audit error. And you'll click fix error to go back and take care of that, that one error. So over here on the right hand side, we'll see this little caution icon and it'll indicate what errors we need to resolve in order to proceed. So we'll just read through those errors 
and update the information accordingly. So this one is just saying that we're missing a selection in section K. So once we make that selection and click refresh, that error will go away. Now we have one other error indicating that we are missing details on our books or in the care of information. So we can click fix error. And then again, will take us to the necessary section in reference for us to complete. And once we've resolved that, we'll be able to proceed. Now we have no errors found, so we can go ahead and move forward with our form. A couple other things I do want to point out here. We also offer the form instructions and the schedule instructions for um, each section of the form for your quick reference guide. And then a small information guide to help explain what each icon that you'll encounter means. So once we've completed the form, all of the errors are resolved, we'll proceed to audit again. We'll click continue to audit. Now that we've resolved all those errors, we'll click next. Once we've processed payment for the return, we'll have the option to share. As mentioned, a lot of our clients share their return with their clients or organization members. Share electronically allows you to add an individual that you'd like to share the return with, and they'll get an email with a link to access that document. If you choose to share manually, no further steps need to be taken. You can go ahead and proceed to the next step. The e-sign option for the 8453 is available here where you can send the e-sign request to your client and they again will get an email with a link to access that document and electronically sign it. Once they've signed, you'll be notified and can proceed with your form. And then once you've completed the signature process, the last step is to transmit the return to the IRS. All right, so that was the Insight application. Um, just a few quick features on how the process works. If you have additional questions or want additional information, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to give you more detailed information on a specific topic. But let's go ahead and open it up for a short Q&A. Um, we are about at our time limit here, but we'll take a couple minutes to do a quick Q&A. Go ahead and post your questions in the chat box and we will answer them live. But please remember, we are not able to provide tax advice. Um, we can just help provide guidance and information on the returns themselves or the process of filing with Tax 990. Jessica's wondering if they can file an amended return for their client if the original return was filed somewhere else. Yes, we do offer the option to file an amended return even if the original return was not filed with Tax 990. When you start the form, you'll want to choose the form-based filing format um, and you can indicate there on page one that it's an amended return. We're getting a lot of pricing questions. For information on pricing, please visit tax990.com backslash pricing. Our form price is per form, so we want you to be able to review all of the information there. We do also have an extensive knowledge base available at tax990.com with a significant amount of commonly asked questions or to further explain specific parts of the form. So you can check that out. All of our webinars are available at tax990.com, all of the past webinars we've done. Um, so definitely look at our website for more detailed information or content, read our blogs, watch our videos, those types of things. Hey, Rebecca's asking about adding multiple organizations to the account, what that process looks like. So if you are filing for several organizations or several clients, we do have an address book option available that allows a book upload. So you can download our book upload template, complete all of that information, and then upload it back into the account. And it'll add all of your organizations automatically to your account. Jamie is wondering if they can file an extension for an extension. 
That's a good question that we get a lot, actually. If you've already filed an 8868 extension or your organization you're working with has already filed, you cannot file another ex extension. Only one extension is applicable per tax year. So if your extension deadline ends, you just have to file the 990 form. Andrea is wondering um, the difference between the 990 and the 990T. Um, so we, I do have webinars on more specific information pertaining to the forms and what each form is used for. The 990 form is used for an organization to report general information about the entire tax year. Um, the 990T form can be filed in addition to the 990 form if the organization reported unrelated business income they would also file a 990-T to further explain that unrelated business income. Those are two completely separate forms. There's no um, combination of them available in Tax 990. You can file the 990 form with us and you can file the 990-T form with us, but we're not automatically going to prompt you to do that like we would with a schedule. I think that about wraps up our time today. Um, we are right at our time frame. So Again, thank you guys for attending. Thank you for letting me join Tax Bandits and share this information with you. Just like all of our products, we do have a live support team available Monday through Friday to assist with the 990 series returns. You can give us a call. You can reach out via chat or email. We're happy to help you along the way. Keep in mind, as the May 15th deadline approaches, we are getting busier, so the wait time may be a little bit longer on the phone but please, we'll call you back if you leave a voicemail or you can send us an email or join our chat. We are here to help you. So if you have questions, let us know. Otherwise, best of luck with your 990 series clients. Um, and yeah, thanks again for letting me join today.